Today I'm going to do a video that is really just going to be entirely screen recorded except for this intro and likely a bit more dry and technical than my other content, but this book should give you a little hint. What I'm going to do today is thanks to the Nano GPT repository by Andre Karpathy, I am going to train a mini GPT model on a RuneScape dataset. So I have dubbed it RuneScape GPT. And I guess we'll just get into it now. So to begin this video, I'm going to start out with the first script that I have added that is not in the Nano GPT GitHub repository. And essentially what this is going to do is provide the data set so that our custom model can be an OSRS GPT instead of the Shakespeare um, demonstration that is on the GitHub. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I could just copy paste all the scripts over from the GitHub, which you'll see later I have done when it comes to actually defining the model and training it and things like that. However, I like to feel involved in things when I play with them. So this gives me a little sense of involvement in actually having played a part in creating the model that will ultimately be produced in this video. So what this does essentially is pretty literal to its name, which is scraping. So we're going to need a data set for our model. And if you are going to try to train your own model or even fine tune, you need a data set of pertinent information so that the model actually learns based off of that information. Now for this, I thought that it was a good idea to just use the OSRS wiki as it has a lot of pertinent information about RuneScape and things like that. It's simply laid out and it has a lot of sentences that can give our model some intelligence on RuneScape. Now, I suppose hypothetically it would be possible to copy paste all of these into a text file independently, but even for a small model like this, the amount of data that you're going to need to gather to get something that's not just very unintelligent is going to be more than you would be able to do by doing that. So that's kind of where the script comes into play. So essentially what this does is it goes to each one of these URLs here, which I have added in manually, and it scrapes them for data. So it looks for all of the paragraphs and it strips them into individual sentences. It makes sure that each sentence is unique and not repetitive so that we don't just have a bunch of repeating lines or something of the sort like that. Once that's done, it joins them all together into a text file, which is going to be named input.txt, which will make sense uh, in a few minutes. And finally, once that's done, it will print as an output in our terminal how many unique sentences it collected. And the only other thing to note is that the time sleep here is just kind of a small break interval between scraping these different pages so that you don't just spam the server. Now, of course, it would be pertinent to mention some ethical considerations here in that certain websites have certain rules in regards to scraping and things of that sort. So, you know, just uh, keep that in mind. So now I am going to go ahead and run this script. And the first thing I want to do is just make sure that the Python interpreter I am using is in the conda environment that I've created for this project so that the necessary packages are all properly installed, which they are here, as we see no errors. So now that that's checked, we're going to run. And in the terminal here, once it's finished, we should hopefully see a decent number of sentences now, this is still going to provide a relatively small data set. However, this is more of an experimental and fun kind of project that I wanted to do just to get better acquainted with some of the basics of models and things like that. So we can see here that 866 unique sentences were collected and saved to input.txt. So I will go in our file folder here. And we can see that we do have input txt. So just to go through that real quick. And nano is just a small command line interface text editor for um, Ubuntu Linux systems. My Mac has it as well. Yours does as well. So we can see here we have a bunch of sentences. But to give a little more of a visual representation of this, we can check here. And we can see that 
if we scroll all the way down, it's all here and ready to be moved on. Now the rest of this video is going to go a bit faster as all of the subsequent scripts that I'm going to show have just been taken directly from the Nano GPT repository and are essentially following along with the quick start scenario right here. Now I want to quickly just touch upon something that I think is kind of cool and that is the prepare Python script included here. Now essentially what this does is that it takes our input.txt data set that we generated previously in the scrape script and it actually tokenizes it into little chunks of numerical representations of the numbers that our model can actually understand and therefore learn based off of those points of data. So the model doesn't actually understand how we see here in human readable format, just these sort of sentences. And I think the best way to demonstrate this is to give a visual explanation of kind of how this works. So there's this tick tokenizer uh, Vercel app right here that you can go to as well just by seeing this URL. And this is the GPT-2 uh, setting. However, uh, don't quote me on whether that means it's the same exact thing here, but this just will suffice to show us kind of what's going on here when the model sees our data. So a sentence like this, which is sentence gathering number five here out of 866 or whatever it was, becomes kind of chopped up into, in this case, 24 different tokens. And essentially what this does, as we can see here, that it's color coded for the individual token, is like this word part becomes now this numerical representation, 636, or rewards becomes 11530. So this allows the data to be processed into a format that the model will be able to train off of and learn off of. Now the only other thing that I want to just quickly show here is that this script will essentially do a 90-10 split of our data. So 90% of it is going to become the train.bin um, file and 10% will be the val.bin which will be the validation. So the model when it gets trained it doesn't train on the validation set, but the validation set is actually used to evaluate the model's performance on unseen data. Because if it were to just learn off of all of the data, it would likely just kind of overfit, which means that it just memorizes the data set and may not do so well on unseen data. So that's kind of just a quick butchering explanation of the point of the validation data set here. Now we can see that our training set has 20,318 tokens and our validation set has 2,229. And if you add these two up, you can see that this is a correct 90-10 split here. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and close this script. And we see that we have our train.bin and our val.bin. So now that we have gathered our data using the scrape script and it has been prepared properly for training using the prepare script, the next step in keeping with following along in the quick start of this repository is to actually begin training, which is pretty exciting. So to do that, I do have a GPU here. So I'm going to simply go ahead and run this in the command line in the conda environment that I have made. Now the one thing that I have done differently here is just a bit of folder organization and naming. So my config is just rsgpt.py instead of train Shakespeare car.py, but it is essentially the same thing and just, you know, for that touch of personality, I suppose you could say. So when I go ahead and copy paste this into the command line and press enter, this will actually begin the act of training our model. And you can see here that it prints out some of the parameters that were, uh, were defined in this override, which is what the configurator script helps with and here and now we can see that our model is actually training and we can see that our training loss is going down and at I believe iteration 250 it will test on the validation set and then therefore print out a validation loss as well and you can see here that it's taking a little bit longer now because that's what it's doing 
So in a second, we should see our first validation loss number, okay, which was 7.3. And you can see here that the best validation loss in the Shakespeare data set was 1.4697. Now, obviously, our data set is a lot smaller than the Shakespeare one. However, just um, I suppose we could assume that this would be a decent loss number to have achieved at this point, or not at this point, but in general. However, with such a small data set like this, in my non-professional understanding is that one of the limitations is that it will very quickly just begin to memorize the data set completely and, and just learn to generate that. And it may not perform as well on unseen data. And that is the overfitting terminology applied to such things. So we can see that our second validation loss was 8.3 and our first one was 7.3 so our validation loss is actually going up and now it's at 8.5 so I think essentially it's safe to say that this model is becoming a little too specialized and it's not learning things that are uh, translating well to unseen data which I think is um, seeing that our validation loss is going up so I believe that I mean in the real world, if you were doing this for like a production thing or something like that, there's definitely ways to work around this and put in stops so that it stops if the validation loss starts going up, I believe. But being that this is just a simple educational exercise, I'm just going to let this run for a little longer. Um, and one thing I also want to show is the NVIDIA control panel here and we will see that I'm only using one card for this. You can use the uh, distributed data parallel options in some of the uh, training script here to actually utilize both cards, but for such a tiny model like this, even one is overkill. I mean, you can run this on a CPU and things like that. That's part of the coolness of this Nano GPT. But we can see that card one is using around 400 watts and 12 gigabytes of video RAM as it's training, and the utilization is very high. So it is definitely very GPU intensive when it comes to training a model or fine tuning or something like that. You can see the temperature slowly climbing and it is, it would get a bit hotter, but I mean, the training is going to stop soon. I believe that it has already saved a checkpoint. Yes, it has. Okay, in this directory, which is out Shakespeare Sharp, because I didn't actually change the directory and the script that it was going to change to, uh, that it was going to save to. So we can see our validation loss is up here now at around 10. So based on that, and based on the fact that the card is probably north of around 80 Celsius right now, okay, not yet, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and stop the training script. And now that that's done, we can kind of just keep that hanging there for a second and the fan will go down and we can at least see that the card is now back to a more nice state for it. <laughs> so the next thing to do after that is simply run the sample script and make sure that the output directory is correctly specified which in this case that is the name of the output directory that we have. So essentially what's going to happen here is it will generate a few samples when we run this. Now the one thing that I want to do or have done is that in the sample script it had originally been set to I think produce 10 samples with up to 500 tokens each. Now that was just essentially spitting out like a large paragraph of RuneScape related stuff in my command line which just didn't really look good and wasn't easy to read. So I just changed my script to only put out two samples with up to 150 tokens each. But nonetheless, now as soon as I press enter, our newly trained RuneScape GPT model will show us what it's got. <laughs> and, and you know, it might. So let's see. All right, so here are our two samples. This method requires having full angler's outfit to access. Okay, Dorgish and crossbow, that's good. Bone bolts can be very cheap. Bone bolts are very cheap. I do remember training with those, and those were good because they were just so damn cheap. So it's talking about 
just some random RuneScape stuff. Sorry, I'm like trying to actually like analyze this one. The whole point of this video was that we actually just trained a model from scratch to understand and spit out RuneScape related terminology, which I think is awesome. I mean, this only understands RuneScape because of what we did in our scrape script here and data preparation and configuration and things of that sort. I think that's actually pretty darn exciting. Now, if you do want to get a little, um, I don't believe freaky is the correct term, but that's just simply what came to mind first. You can up the temperature. So uh, a higher temperature can correlate to more random and perhaps uh, uh, less lucid outputs in, in specific scenarios. And also, I could actually go ahead and change the actual like quote unquote prompt for this sample generation. So I'm just going to write like the best thing to do in RuneScape. I can't type. All right, and, and obviously this model is not going to be like any good at doing this because this was not trained at all for this. However, it could be kind of funny. So now that I've made those changes, so the temperature's a bit higher and it's got a weird little prompt. So it's probably gonna just, best thing to do in RuneScape is about equivalent boosts, which negating rune minus 46 give exp so you can see that it doesn't actually understand like oh here's context that implies that i should finish is something x it's just kind of spitting out random portions of its training data at this point but with such a small data set and the simplicity of this nano gpt repository this is what you get from such a simple and actually palatable exercise for somebody who is approaching this as a non-professional and things like that. So I think this is awesome and just such a cool way to actually do something relating to the actual technology of all this cool AI stuff that has really become so popular in the past few years. And it's cool to be like, hey, this little model here that's spinning out RuneScape stuff is, it's mine. I am its father. No, I'm just kidding, but <laughs> it's cool. Click here to deal minimal damage absorption abilities. So that is going to conclude this little short video. You can see here that the sample is still there up on the screen and this was totally a lot of fun. This is my outro. And now I'm gonna go back and probably just begin procrastinating with this little remote control car design. So, till next time.